Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Anita Anand with the evening news. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures the country will overcome the challenge of corona pandemic with strength and dedication. Eighth installment of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi released to over 9 crore 50 lakh farmers. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 83.5%, over 3 lakh 43,000 new cases reported. Nearly 18 crore COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Kendras makes significant contribution in fight against COVID-19 pandemic by providing essential medicines at affordable cost. Over 4 crore 17 lakh rural households provided with new tap water connection under Jal Jeevan mission. In JNK, BSF recovers arms and ammunition dropped from a Pakistani drone in Samba district. NDRF teams deployed in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra in view of Cyclone Tokte warning. And Eid al-Fitr being celebrated across the country in a subdued manner amid the coronavirus pandemic. As the number of COVID cases is on the rise, we appeal to our listeners not to lower their guard, follow all precautions, and all those above 44 years who have taken the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine to get vaccinated with the second dose at this scheduled time. Stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured that the country will overcome the challenge of the corona pandemic with its strength and dedication. He asserted that India is not a nation that will lose hope in tough times. He was speaking at a virtual event after releasing the eighth installment of financial benefit under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi PM Kisan scheme to over 9 crore 50 lakh farmers in the country. Mr. Modi said farmers have shown their grit in serving the nation even during the testing times of COVID-19. Highlighting the record procurement due to innovation in farming techniques, the Prime Minister said that farmers from Punjab and Haryana have started getting the benefit of the direct transfers for the first time. I am proud to say that Punjab and Haryana are millions of पहली बार डायरेक्ट ट्रांसफर की इस सुविधा से जुड़े हैं अभी तक पंजाब के किसानों के बैंक खाते में करीब 18000 करोड़ रुपए और हरियाणा के किसानों के बैंक खाते में 9000 करोड़ रुपए सीधे उनके बैंक अकाउंट में जमा हो चुके हैं अपना पूरा पैसा अपने बैंक खाते में पाने का संतोष क्या होता है ये पंजाब और हरियाणा के किसान भी अनुभव भी कर रहे हैं और मुखर होकर बोल भी रहे हैं Mr Modi said the PM Kisan scheme has proven to be very beneficial for the marginal farmers in the country Talking about the COVID pandemic the prime minister said a large number of cases are being reported from the rural areas as well he urged the village panchayats to ensure proper awareness and sanitation in their respective areas on the occasion mr modi called upon the state governments to ensure strict laws to counter black marketing of medicines and medical supplies he said the center is working with the whole of government approach towards building new covid hospitals and oxygen plants इस संकट के समय में दवाइयां और जरूरी वस्तुओं की जमाखोरी और काला बाजारी में भी कुछ लोग अपने निहित स्वार्थ के कारण लगे हुए हैं मैं राज्य सरकारों से आग्रह करूंगा कि ऐसे लोगों पर कठोर से कठोर कार्रवाई की जाए ये मानवता के खिलाफ का कृत्य है the Prime Minister said the armed forces are also working with full strength to ensure oxygen supply and COVID-related care in these tough times, assuring everyone about the government's resolve towards fighting COVID-19 with all its might. The Prime Minister said he shares the feelings of the countrymen at every loss of life reported in the country. Mr. Modi requested everyone to register themselves for vaccination and urged them to strictly adhere to COVID-appropriate behaviour at all times. 
The Prime Minister expressed happiness over the active adoption of new techniques of organic farming by farmers in the country. खेती में नए समाधान, नए विकल्प देने के लिए सरकार निरंतर प्रयास कर रही है। जैविक खेती को बढ़ावा देना ऐसा ही प्रयास है। इस प्रकार की फसलों में लागत भी कम है, ये मिट्टी और इंसान के स्वास्थ्य के लिए लाभदायक है और इनकी कीमत भी ज्यादा मिलती है। on the occasion, the Prime Minister also interacted with beneficiary farmers of the scheme from various parts of the country, including Unnao in Uttar Pradesh, Anandapur in Andhra Pradesh, Riboy in Meghalaya, Kar Nicobar in Andaman and Nicobar, and Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir. Harwin Ji, Kisan Samman Nidhika, Desh ke chote kisano ko pahot laab ho raha hai. Aur mujhe bataya gaya hai ki आपके सामने भी कम जमीन की बहुत बड़ी समस्या है आपने जैविक खेती की तरफ ही क्यों मुड़े और इससे जीवन में क्या अंतर आया ग्रेजुएशन करने के बाद हमने अपनी खेती में कुछ नया करने के लिए सोचा था उसी समय मुख्यमंत्री जी के द्वारा गंगा यात्रा चलाई जा रही थी जिसमें हमने भाग लिया और आप भी अटे अटल घाट पर आए हुए थे तब के बाद कृषि विश्वविद्यालय कानपुर में हमने जैविक खेती का प्रशिक्षण चल रहा था उसमें हमने भाग लिया और वहां से हमने प्रशिक्षण भी लिया सर और उसके बाद हमने कृषि विभाग के अधिकारियों से संपर्क किया और उनसे हमने जैविक खेती की पूरी की पूरी ट्रेनिंग ली Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's efforts are always in the direction of good governance, improving lifestyle and doubling farmers' income. He said income-centric policies are being framed for the agriculture sector, describing PM Kisan Samman Yojana as the most comprehensive scheme. Mr. Tomar thanks Prime Minister for the focus on Gao, Garib and Kisan and also for transferring more than 20,000 crore rupees to bank accounts of nearly 9.5 crore farmers under PM Kisan. The minister also added that the agriculture ministry is putting all around efforts to achieve 100% saturation under the PM Kisan scheme. Jo Kisan paad rahe, wo iske daire mein ab aajana chahiye, is mein deri nahi lagna chahiye, मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं विभाग इस दिशा में पूरे मनोयोग के साथ काम कर रहा है आधार लिंक का भी काम चल रहा है और कुछ ही दिनों में सभी पात्र हितग्राही इसमें जुड़ जाएंगे और 100% सेचुरेशन की जो आपकी कल्पना है उस कल्पना को हम लोग मूर्त रूप देने में सफल होंगे during the rabi marketing season 2021-22, Mission One Nation, One MSP, One DBT has been given a firm shape as for the first time, farmers of Punjab and Haryana have started receiving payments directly into their bank accounts against the sale of their wheat crop. Now, DBT has been implemented across the country. Up to the 12th of this month, over 56,059 crore rupees had been directly transferred to farmers' accounts in the country, out of which 23,402 crore rupees, which is 91% of the due payment, has been released to the farmers of Punjab. India has administered nearly 18 crore COVID vaccine doses. With over 20,27,000 vaccine jabs given in the last 24 hours, the nation has successfully administered nearly 17 crore 93 lakh doses so far. Till now, over 4 crore 5 lakh people in the country have been vaccinated with both the doses, while nearly 13 crore 88 lakh have been administered the first dose. The Health Ministry has informed that with over 4,37,000 vaccine doses administered to people in the age group of 18 to 44 years in the past 24 hours, so far nearly 39,14,000 doses have been administered to beneficiaries in this age group. The first dose of Sputnik V vaccine has been administered in Hyderabad today as part of its soft launch and limited pilot. Dr. Reddy's Laboratories Limited, in a press release, said it received the regulatory clearance from the Central Drugs Laboratory, Kasoli, yesterday. Reddy has also announced that the imported vaccine costs an MRP of 948 rupees and a 5% GST per dose. The centre will supply over 1 crore 91 lakh vaccine doses to the states and union territories free of cost in the next 15 days. This will include 162.5 lakh doses of Covishield and 29.4 lakh doses of Covaxin. 
The delivery schedule for this allocation will be shared in advance. States have been asked to direct the concerned officials to ensure rational and judicious utilization of allocated doses and minimize vaccine wastage. In the previous fortnight, over 1.7 crore vaccine doses have been made available by the center to states free of cost. In the last 24 hours, over 3,44,000 people have recovered from COVID-19 infection, taking the recovery rate to 83.5%. In the same period, over 3,43,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported. There are over 37 lakh active cases in the country. Till now, over 2 crore 79,000 people have recovered from the infection. 4,000 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, and the death toll due to coronavirus pandemic has reached 2 lakh 62,317. The Railways has delivered nearly 7,900 tonnes of liquid medical oxygen to various states across the country in the last 20 days. The Railways Ministry said Oxygen Expresses have been delivering nearly 800 tonnes of liquid medical oxygen to the nation each day for the last few days. The first Oxygen Express for Andhra Pradesh with 40 tonnes and Kerala with 118 tonnes of oxygen are on the way. The ministry said first Oxygen Express to Tamil Nadu delivered 80 tons this morning and the second Oxygen Express is on the way. 130 Oxygen Expresses have completed their journey so far and brought relief to various states. The government today said the inflow of foreign aid to combat COVID continues to be swiftly cleared, apportioned and sent to states and union territories. The Union Health Ministry said more than 10,000 oxygen concentrators, over 12,000 oxygen cylinders, 19 oxygen generation plants, 6,497 ventilators and over 4 lakh remdesivir vials were delivered and dispatched through road and air from the 27th of April to the 13th of May this year. The ministry said the country has been receiving international donations and aid of COVID-19 relief medical supplies and equipment from different countries and organizations to augment its efforts in fighting the unprecedented surge of cases. It said through a streamlined and systematic mechanism, various ministries and departments of the government have seamlessly collaborated for expeditiously delivering the incoming global aid to states and union territories. A dedicated coordination cell has been created in the Union Health Ministry to coordinate the receipt and allocation of foreign COVID relief material. This cell started functioning from the 26th of last month. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshadi Kendras are making significant contribution in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic by providing essential medicines at affordable cost. Over 7,700 Jan Oshadi Kendras are functional across the country. The Chemicals and Fertilizers Ministry has said a total of 1,449 essential medicines are available for sale in these centers. The best quality N95 face mask, which is an effective tool in the fight against COVID-19, is available at only 25 rupees in these centers. The ministry added that 37 distributors have been roped in to strengthen the supply mechanism in the rural and remote areas. Speaking about the benefit of the Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshadi Kendra, Agra resident Narendra Sharma demanded to open more such centers. यहां पर प्रधानमंत्री जी के द्वारा निर्देशित की गई यहां सस्ती दवाई मिलती है तो मैं यहां ज्यादातर मल्टी विटामिन और बच्चों की जो और और औषधियां वो लेने आता हूं कई जगह आगरा में ये खुलना चाहिए कोरोना काल में इन दवाइयों का जो स्टॉक था वो भरपूर था और जो बाजार की दवाई थी और जो यहां की दवाई थी उन दोनों का शेम असर लेकिन मूल्य यहां का कम था बाजार का ज्यादा था मैं जनता से भी निवेदन करता हूं कि इन औषधियों को यूज करें ये बहुत अच्छी दवाई है the prices of Jan Oshadi medicines are cheaper at least by 50% and in some cases by 80 to 90% of the market price of the branded medicines. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, has issued an advisory for upholding the dignity and protecting the rights of the dead. The advisory has been issued in view of deaths during the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic and challenges in management of dead bodies. 
The Commission said the guidelines issued by the World Health Organization, National Disaster Management Authority, the Government of India and various state governments have emphasized on the maintenance of the COVID protocol while upholding the dignity of the dead, including decent burial according to respective religious customs and practices. The Commission has urged the concerned authorities of the central and state governments to implement the recommendations and submit the report about action taken on the advisory within four weeks to it. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narain Modi assures that country will overcome the challenge of corona pandemic with strength and dedication. Eight installment of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi released to over 9 crore 50 lakh farmers. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 83.5%. Over 3,43,000 new cases reported. Nearly 18 crore COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshadi Kendras makes significant contribution in fight against COVID-19 pandemic by providing essential medicines at affordable cost. Over 4 crore 17 lakh rural households provided with new tap water connection under Jal Jeevan Mission. In GNK, BSF recovers arms and ammunition dropped from a Pakistani drone in Samba district. NDRF teams deployed in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra in view of Cyclone Tokte warning. Idul Fitr being celebrated across the country in a subdued manner amid coronavirus pandemic. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the evening news. The BJP has criticized the Delhi government over the issue of oxygen shortage in the national capital. Briefing media today, the party spokesperson Sambit Patra alleged that Arvind Kejriwal's government has failed in proper distribution and storage of oxygen in the city. Citing a report by the Petroleum and Explosives Safety Organization, he said the supplied liquid medical oxygen was returned by the Delhi government on a few occasions as it had no storage capacities. He said the Delhi government had even asked the neighboring states to store its oxygen due to non-availability of storage facilities. He alleged that it shows the inefficiency of Arvind Kejriwal's government. Mr. Patra also alleged that 33 people have lost their lives in two private hospitals in the city due to the AAP government's inability to build enough storage capacities in the national capital. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has said that implementing the oxygen mission is an option to make the state self-sufficient in oxygen production. He was speaking at the inaugural of the Oxygen Generation Project at Dhara Shev Sugar Factory in Chorakwali in Osmanabad district through a virtual conference today. He said sugar industries of the state should take the initiative and come forward for oxygen production. More from our Mumbai correspondent. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre said that in the first wave of Corona pandemic, a large number of testing labs, COVID care centers were set up, which was a need of our at that time. But the challenge of the second wave is huge, and the requirement of oxygen from different parts of the state is large. Thakre further said that at present, state oxygen requirement is approximately 1700 metric tons, and we are producing 1200 metric tons of oxygen daily. As a precautionary measure, we want to produce 3000 metric tons. If this target is achieved, we can become self-reliant. Bhavna Gokhale, AIR News, Mumbai. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin said that the DMK members of Parliament and Assembly would donate their one month salary for COVID cause. The state has received five life vaccine additionally and will begin the vaccination process for those above 18 years of age from tomorrow. More from our Chennai correspondent. According to the Chief Minister's instructions, State Ministers are visiting all the districts to review and supervise COVID-related activities. COVID care facilities have been set up at institutions with good infrastructure. Beds have been added according to the needs of the districts. 
Availability and distribution of medical oxygen has been made in coordination with various departments even as oxygen consignments are received through rail and air. The state government has regularized the fee structure of private ambulances. WhatsApp helpline numbers have been announced to the public to seek help during COVID times in all the districts. Chennai Corporation Commissioner Gagandeep Singh Bedi has said that COVID patients living with families in a single room accommodation should move into COVID care centers. He told that the corporation officials will monitor the welfare of such COVID patients. Joy, AIR News, Chennai. In Himachal Pradesh, Ayush Department launched statewide wellness program Ayush Ghardwar for COVID-19 patients in Solon District today. Our correspondent reports that the initiative aims to provide a holistic healthcare approach through Ayush to ensure not only physical but also mental, social and spiritual well-being to COVID patients through Ayush. A report. Ayush Ghardwar program is being launched by Ayush Vibhag Himachal Pradesh in collaboration with Art of Living Organization. Under this program, around 1,000 virtual groups will be made on different social media platforms through which trained instructor or Ayurveda will conduct virtual sessions on yoga, pranayam, breathing exercise, meditation, therapies, medicines and practices to calm the mind beside others. The program aims to reduce the disease burden of the pandemic by enhancing the recovery rate, improved quality of life, equitable healthcare facility and to ensure better better rehabilitation post-COVID-19 infection. The statewide program will benefit around 30,000 COVID patients who are currently on home isolation and hospitalized in institutions. Sanjeev Sundariyal, AIR News, Shimla. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has said efforts are being made to conduct 1 lakh COVID tests daily in the state. Talking to newspersons in Guwahati after a review meeting, he said 20,000 people would be tested daily in Guwahati from the 17th of this month. He also informed that from 17 onwards, COVID patients above the age of 50 who do not have a separate toilet in their houses would have to be mandatorily shifted to COVID care centers or hospitals. Mr. Sarma also said a new SOP for tea garden areas would be issued by the health department tomorrow. He said steps are being taken for providing food items worth 2,000 rupees as one-time allowance to poor patients in containment zones. In Kargil, Ladakh, the health department is using IT tools to provide COVID test results to the public. Hundreds of sample results are now being sent daily on mobiles. Here is a report. Ever since Zorila X is opened for civilian traffic, there is tremendous pressure on Kargil Health Department for sample collection. Within 15 days of road open, over 16,000 samples were collected. Earlier results are being given manually at Chief Medical Officer's office. This was allowing crowds to gather and defeating the vivid appropriate behavior. Considering the growing numbers after Ladakh adopted intense sampling, Kargil Health Department CMO Dr. Munawar Hussain Wazir drew an idea from ATM SMS service and asked his technical team and NIC to devise a program on similar lines. Dr. Munawar Hussain said, Our initiative is that the minimum our health workers बाकी बाहर के लोगों से कांटेक्ट में कम आए क्योंकि जितना कांटेक्ट कम होगा उतना कोविड लगने का खतरा कम होगा उसके साथ-साथ लोगों का काम और समय बचाने के लिए जिस तरह आर्टिफिशियल टेस्ट लेने के बाद मैसेज आता है फिर उसी तरह मोबाइल पे उनका रिपोर्ट भी क्यों ना जाए दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट इज काइंड इनिशिएटिव इन बोथ यूटी लद्दाख एंड यूटी जेएनके इंप्रोवाइज्ड सिस्टम हैज रिड्यूस्ड फिजिकल प्रेजेंस ऑफ पब्लिक फॉर रिजल्ट एंड फैसिलिटेटिंग द रिजल्ट्स ऑन मोबाइल for AIR News, this is Anadali from Kargil, Union Territory of Ladakh. The Sikkim government today announced a complete lockdown in the state from 5 a.m. on 17th of May to 5 a.m. on 24th of May. The decision was taken after the state reported a continued COVID-19 case positivity rate of more than 20% over the last few weeks. Sikkim has recorded 2,903 new cases and 51 deaths in the last 14 days. A report. During the complete lockdown during 17th to 24th May in Sikkim, only medicine shops will be allowed to open while milk vending will be allowed during 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. All state government offices, shops, private commercial establishments, institutions, gymnasiums, markets and factories except those engaged in the production of medicines, medical equipment, oxygen and allied sector will be closed. The COVID-19 vaccination program will continue during this period. 
all activities congregations and movement of vehicles will be prohibited there will be exemption for movement for emergency services and covid-19 testing and vaccination or medical emergency with sarkar sarkar and pankaj dhungal paidya sharma from gangtok for air in mizoram the ongoing total lockdown which is supposed to continue till morning of 17th of may has been extended by one more week across the state in order issued today by the chief secretary and chairman of the state disaster management authority lalun moaya chaungo said that the total lockdown will continue to remain in force till 4 am of the 24th of may the government has said that more than 4 crore 17 lakh rural households have been provided with new tap water connection under the jal jeevan mission Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced this mission on the 15th of August 2019 which aims to provide tap water connections to every rural household in the country by 2024 at the time of the announcement about 3 crore 23 lakh rural households had tap water connections the jal shakti mission said now more than 7 crore 41 lakh rural households in the country are getting assured tap water in their homes India's overall exports including merchandise and services in the last month are estimated to be 51.79 billion US dollars exhibiting a positive growth of 93.21% over the same period last year. The Commerce and Industry Ministry has said gems and jewelry, handicraft items, leather products, electronics and engineering goods among others registered positive growth in export last month. In Assam, two persons were killed and two others injured in a grenade blast near Digboi in Tinsukia district today. Motorcycle bone miscreants lobbed a grenade at a shop in Tingrai market area. Union Minister Home Minister Hamid Shah spoke to the Chief Minister uh, on the blast and Mr. Sharma apprised him of the situation. In the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, alert troops of the Border Security Force today recovered arms and ammunition which were dropped from a Pakistani drone this morning in Samba district. The arms and ammunition were wrapped in a polythene packet and the consignment was recovered from border outpost Regal in Samba area. Eid al-Fitr is being celebrated across the country today in a subdued manner amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Eid al-Fitr is celebrated at the culmination of the fasting month of Ramzan in Kerala and the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Eid was celebrated yesterday. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have greeted everyone on the occasion. In view of cyclone talk day warning, The National Disaster Response Force NDRF has deployed 24 teams in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra. DG NDRF SN Pradhan said 29 teams are on standby. Meanwhile, the India Meteorological Department has predicted heavy to very heavy rainfall at a few places with extremely heavy falls at isolated places over Lakshadweep, Kerala and Mahe today. The coastal and south interior Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry are expected to witness heavy to very heavy rainfall at isolated places. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 25 and 40 degrees Celsius. Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Temperature will hover between 11 and 23 degrees. Jammu will have a partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature will be 21 degrees, maximum around 34. Leh is expected to have a partly cloudy sky, while minimum and maximum temperature will be between 6 and 19 degrees. Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky. Muzaffarabad, the sky will be partly cloudy. Minimum temperature will be 11 degrees, maximum will be around 23. Now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures the country will overcome the challenge of corona pandemic with strength and dedication. Eighth installment of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi released to over 9 crore 50 lakh farmers. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 83.5% over 3 lakh 43,000 new cases reported. Nearly 18 crore COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Kendra has made significant contribution in fight against COVID-19 pandemic by providing essential medicines at affordable cost. 
Over 4 crore 17 lakh rural households provided with new tap water connection under Jal Jeevan Mission. In JNK, BSF recovers arms and ammunition dropped from a Pakistani drone in Samba district. NDRF teams deployed in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra in view of Cyclone Tokte warning and Eid al-Fitr being celebrated across the country in a subdued manner amid the coronavirus pandemic. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.